This is one of my absolute favourite times to be at any airport. It's 6.30 in the morning. The sun doesn't rise until 6.53. I'm the only one here. I've got the whole place to myself. There's no one else here. This is Moorabbin Airport, it's the biggest general aviation airport here in Melbourne, Australia, but there's nobody here. I've got the whole place to myself. This is by far my favourite time to be at an airport, not just because I do have the whole place to myself and I can do whatever I want here right now, but look at this sunrise. That video I made a couple of weeks ago about one of my weaknesses, being a bit lazy sometimes, resonated quite well with you. So I do want to touch on that again today. But the plan, to be honest, is very straightforward today. I'm going to get in the plane. I'm going to take off. I'm going to head south. That's the plan. That's basically it. I do talk about weaknesses a lot on this channel. I talked about self-doubt, imposter syndrome, laziness. But the, the older I get, the more I realise that weakness is a relative term, and it's you comparing yourself to someone else. You're saying you're not as you're not as this as someone. I think the older and maybe the more stubborn I get, the more I realise that's such a futile exercise. Comparing yourself to others is one of the best ways I believe that you can stop yourself growing and achieving your full potential. Checking everything's good on the batteries there, which is good. I'll check the left magneto. Back to both and check the right. All good, back to both. Alrighty, we have a happy Echo Yankee Zulu. If you've watched this channel for a while, the other thing you'll remember is that when I fly this early in the morning from Moorabbin, the tower's not actually active, so it is still a CTAF, Common Traffic Advisory Frequency. Once again, the only pilots I'm talking to currently at the airfield are the ones in this aircraft. That's the... I, there's no one else here. Moorabbin CTAF, Sirius Echo Yankee Zulu is entering and rolling runway 35 right. It'll be a downwind departure, right turn, tracking to the south. Moorabbin traffic. Temperatures and pressures are good. Up we go. Okay, 500 caps now available. Make a right turn. Echo Yankee Zulu, I am departing time 17, we're climbing 2500, tracking southbound, rapid traffic. Pretty, very pretty. Thought I'd go and check out the south coast today. I know sometimes on these early morning flights we either do the city orbits or we just go down the coast to the heads at the bottom of Port Phillip Bay here in Melbourne, but I thought we'd actually go down the south coast. I do think I'm a bit of a loner. Like I really enjoy my own company. I'm very comfortable kind of being in my own company. But as a pilot, that's actually a really good thing because there's no one else here. See, being a loner is quite a good thing if you want to sit for hours on end on your own in an aircraft. I think having that comfort in your own skin and being confident to be in your own environment and not needing other people. I love having other people around me. I love my family and my friends, but don't need people around me all the time. And I actually think for me, that makes the long trips that I do, the waking up early in the morning and coming to the airport on the own, it makes it a lot easier to do. And therefore I think if you are a little bit of a loner, or at least if you really enjoy your own company, being a pilot is a pretty good thing to do. 
The second one is, I'm a little bit of an anxious person, I suppose. I don't, I wouldn't say I suffer from anxiety, but I do get a little bit anxious around, you know, large groups of people and big noisy environments. I tend to be a little bit skeptical of the world around me. I question a lot of things before I'm happy to go ahead. But again, I think that sense of cautiousness and almost that sense of anxiety that you have as a person can again really help you in the aviation world because skepticism is a good thing to have in the cockpit. I'm not saying go the full hog and just think that everything's going to go wrong and be so completely anxious that you know you're not going to enjoy the flight and you're never actually going to get out there and do any aviating yourself. But I just mean questioning things and being yeah, being a little bit sceptical of what's going on around you at any one time. Just because the engine looks like it's doing all right now, will it be doing all right in the future? What if it's not? Where will I go? Where will I land the aircraft? Like in a social environment, having so many questions firing through your head, which I do all the time, is not necessarily a good thing. But I think here in the cockpit actually gives me a lot of strength. Beautiful. The southern coastline. Here we go. So if you keep going out that way to the ocean, you get to Tasmania and past that you get to Antarctica. There's nothing else down there. I love this part of the coastline. Quarter 7.30, contact me, 122.75, expect star clearance. 122.75, quarter 7.30. The next thing that I would consider a bit of a weakness of mine is I'm not very verbose. When I'm in groups of people, I'm actually quite quiet. And I think that's because I don't like speaking unless I feel like I've actually got something to say. When you're in the cockpit, and also in all environments of life, but especially in aviation, you don't want to speak unless you've got something to say. And I'm not just talking about on the radio, I'm talking about you know briefing your passengers, flying with co-pilots, just flying with friends. You don't want to be sitting there chat, 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 chattering away. You've seen those air crash investigation episodes with cockpit resource management when there's just one strong voice that's talking all the time and the other pilots don't want to question that strong voice and that's caused some problems and some incidents in, in the past. Having a, a strong voice when you need it and talking when you need to talk, I'm actually really comfortable with that. I'm getting more comfortable in the social world but I'm very comfortable with that in the aviation world. All right, let's turn her around here. I'm still desperately trying to see whales down here. I still, in all my time flying, I've never seen a whale from the air, from my own aircraft. Singapore 227, understood. Uh, you can expect director Wendy shortly for time 4-4. It's so nice hearing international aircraft like Singapore Airlines just there on the radio. It's so nice. I'm hearing that more and more as I'm flying around these days. It's also fun because I've got my first international flight in over two years coming up. Well, fingers crossed, it's coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'll be vlogging that and sharing it with you on the channel. I am so excited to leave Australia. I didn't have any breakfast before I left. Oh, that'll do. Um, so, actually, I should mention, thank you, Kezi's Kitchen. It's kind of sponsored. Like, they didn't pay me, they just sent me these for free, so... Well, they paid me in food. And to be honest, if there's any other companies out there that also want to pay me in food, then I'm very open to that. Please, pay me in food. 100% vegan as well for all my plant-based friends out there. You know, in the early days of the channel, I've been plant-based for a while. In the early days of the channel, I was actually quite ashamed, not ashamed, I was quite worried about talking about that because I thought people watching me go, oh, bloody vegan, don't really care about what he's saying. But I think that actually is part of this whole thing that I'm talking about in the video today, which is that embracing those individualities is a really important part of life. The older I get, the less I care what, about what people think about my individualities and the more I actually start to embrace them. So if you are watching this and you are a bit of a loner as well, if you do go to parties and you're the one standing in the corner because you don't know what to say to anyone, if you feel a bit anxious sometimes or nervous around people, don't worry about it. There's lots of us out there. And if you're looking for something to do as a hobby or as a career, I reckon aviation is a great thing to get into. I think that list of personality strengths, not weaknesses, uh, is almost a prerequisite for this world. I mean, we're a funny bunch of us pilots. Like, who would choose to wake up at five o'clock in the morning just to hop in a plane in a chilly airport, fly down to the south coast, just because you can. I mean, who wouldn't? This is brilliant. <laughs>
Vic, Cirrus Echo Yankee Zulu is seven miles to the south, 1,500, just at Karam. Inbound, uh, straight in approach, runway 35 right, estimate circuit time zero, zero. Rabbit. Well, this could be interesting because the tower could uh, come active right as we're coming in for our approach, but we'll keep going as normal. Station Bram Ram Tower's now open. We'll get a runway 35 left and right. The Q&H here is uh, 1008. Good morning. And uh, three miles south we have. Echo Yankee Zulu, yeah, we're on a two mile final, 35 right. Can we go 35 left? Echo Yankee Zulu, that's approved. 35 left, Echo Yankee Zulu, thanks. Five uh, left, you're number one. Number one, runway left, Echo Yankee Zulu. And sorry, I stepped in you, have I got clear to land? Uh, no, not just at the moment. I'll wait until I see you and have a proper look at the runway and then we'll go with that. <laughs> Roger that, thank you. Okay, to it. Morning, mate. Got him. Whilst I'm landing the plane at Morabin, if you like aviation adventures, check out this playlist of me attempting to fly around the border of my home state of Victoria, 5,000 kilometres using only a paper map. Fun adventure over a couple of days. If you like flying, you'll enjoy that one. But thank you as always for watching. Embrace your individualities and I'll see you in the next video.